without further ado, we're going to start with our, <clears throat> our webinar. Uh, this webinar is going to be specifically focused on mail butler context, more specifically into custom relationship manager inside of your inbox. So Tobias, if you can now take over. Yeah, thanks Rogelio for the intro and bonding with our audience. It fits pretty well because our topic is today building customer relationships and why it's so important and how to do so using MailButler's context feature. So that's why we are starting right away with the first slide, which is about what is a CRM actually. So CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management. It is a strategy to manage, analyze, and improve customer relations to drive growth. Sounds very technical to me, but actually, let me give you a little example to make it more clear because it's very simple to digest in the end. So for example, have you have you ever walked into a coffee shop or into your favorite restaurant and they recognized you, they even remembered your name and they even remembered your usual order and you felt like, wow, great, great service. And that's exactly already customer relationship management on a, in this case on a very personal level actually. And for me, it's very important to mention that customer relationship management is not about building an address book of names and addresses of all your customers or something like that, because it's more than just like a database of customer contact. When a business knows or when you know um, your customers well, you can tailor your products, your services, and especially communication to match your customer needs and you make you feel make your customer feel special. So I already mentioned some of them, but there are many, many benefits why you should um, um, use the CRM tool for your business. So you might know the saying, it's not just about making a sale, it's about building relationships. And I think it fits pretty well because there are so many benefits and positive outcomes when building a strong relationship with your customers. I listed a couple of them here. I think there are many more, but um, one of the benefits of a strong relationship with your customers is that they will be very loyal. So they are more likely to stick with your business when they trust you and have a strong relationship with you. And these loyal customers, they will have a very big positive impact on your customer lifetime value as they tend to buy more over time and which is of course resulting in increased revenue. Also another great benefit is the word of mouth. It's actually a big driver for your business and especially in the beginning, it was one of the biggest driver for us for May Butler when we started back then in 2015. We convinced like a a very small group of users of our product, of course, of our service, but also really engaging them into the software development, and everything, and have a really strong relationship with them. And they thanked, gave it back actually by recommending us a lot. Um, another great effect of strong customer relationship is honest and constructive feedback. This is very valuable. It's helping you to improve your product or services to become even better every day. Besides these, there are many, many other benefits uh, when you invest in customer relationship, like reduce marketing costs because they do the marketing for you through word of mouth, recommending you, referring you, talking about you, higher tolerance for mistakes. So of course you need to provide like a great service, but from time to time, there could be some mistakes, a bug in Maybutler, for example, in our scenario, and um, when you have like a strong relationship with the user base, they toler the tolerance for these mistakes is there. And of course, better understanding for customer needs so you know exactly what to deliver them. And as I said before, many other benefits. So a lot of talking about the benefits, but how do you reach that strong relationship or how do you build the strong relationship with your customers? Sounds always very simple. But to be honest, there is no, no, there's no this one answer, this not this one strategy, because it depends on various factors, such as your industry. What's the industry you're working in? Um, are there any specific demographic of your customer base? 
What kind of communication channels do you use to talk to them? Is it via email, via phone? Are there any communication channels that companies who simply don't talk to the customers? Um, whether you operate online or offline and many other factors are affecting actually your, your customer relationship man man management strategy. But in general, you can say that you need to, first of all, understand your needs, uh, the needs of your customers. So you can only understand that by talking to them. And once you understand the needs, it's also important, of course, to exceed the expectation by providing exceptional customer service. So you need to be good in what you're doing. Um, otherwise, you can't build a strong relationship. And probably if you're not good in what you're doing, you will be running out of business very soon. And of course, and that's the big point which we are highlighting later um, also, is personalize your communication. Um, there are, of course, different level of um, personalization. Again, it depends on different factors. For example, how many clients you have. If you have like only 10 to 20 customers, you probably will talk to them about how the last vacation in Florida was when they mentioned it before. But when you have 10,000 of customers like we do, I don't know what your last vacation was. It's simply like that. But we, for example, we try to personalize the, the communication based on different things we might know and try to bring the right info at the right time. And last but not least, most importantly, is listen. Um, for example, we have these webinars. That's why um, Rochel, you had this nice intro. We try to interact with our user base whenever possible and listen what you are saying. We have different um, channels, how you can do like feature requests and so on. So it's important for you to listen to your customers. And I also prepared like a very little case study, a very simple business actually. It sounds very simple, but could be also very complex. And it's one of our customers and maybe it's one of our best customers because it's also my wife, Roxana. She's using, of course, our product, May Butler. And she is a wedding family and an event photographer. And two year, I think around two years ago, she started to develop like a customer relationship management strategy for her business. So two years ago, she had like a new client. It was, her name was um, Nicolette and Martin. They hired Roxana to document the wedding. And as normal, Roxana scheduled like a a first meeting with them to talk about all the details for the wedding and to do her job. She needs to have all the contact details, of course, like name, address, phone number and so on. She also needs to take some notes about the wedding itself, like the, the timeline, the location, preferred style of the photos and so on, and some tasks for herself, like preparing a quote and contract. So that's like the usual business of a photographer and nothing special there. But she started also to, yeah, to get a lot of personal info from the couple. During the first meeting, they're talking about the family and friends are coming to the wedding. They also mentioned, for example, in this case, the name of the dog. And they even mentioned that the dog is not allowed to, to be brought to the location. That's why they hired like a dog sitter who's waiting outside all the time with the dog and taking care of the dog. But for them, the dog is very important, like a child. So she got like a very personal information from them, also a lot of about the interests, hobbies, how they met, how the first date was and so on. So Roxy took the time and note down all these personal info. And even during the wedding, she continued with these notes by knowing now the favorite flower of the of the bride, what the first dance song was, were there like any cultural traditions during the wedding. And also she took some some notes of the quotes from the wedding speech. So a lot of information and at the moment she's spending a lot of time on it, um, noting down everything. So how is she going to use that information? Before she had a CRM in place, she, of course, after the wedding, she she's sending the invoice using an invoice template like nearly everyone does, then review and adding the photos. She's pretty good in that. Um, she's a very good photographer. That's why she's still in business and delivering the photos with a nice thank you email. So that's how she did business before. Um, she was using her strategy 
to build strong relationships. And that's the same way like 90% of the photographers are doing their business. But now she's sending the invoice with the quote of the wedding speech and also putting like a little photo, like one of her favorite photos on the on the invoice. So directly having a personal touch on the invoice, delivering positive feelings, even you're getting an invoice where you need to pay uh, two to three thousand euros, which is a lot of money. Then also while um, during the wedding, she remembered of the dog sitting outside. So she went like 10 minutes outside, did like a little photo shoot with the dog and now edi editing also these photos. And that's a surprise for the couple that inside the gallery of photos, there is also the dog. Um, and of course, um, delivering the photos. She's still doing this um, online gallery and stuff like that. But on top of that, she's also sending like a little wooden box with the favorite flower and some printouts of the images and the personal note. So that's already surprising the couple a lot, but she doesn't stop there because two weeks, three weeks, five weeks after she delivered the photos, they will simply forget about the photographer of the wedding. So what she's doing from now on, she's sending every birthdays, them a very personal emails, picking up some personalization info from her notes, for example, some hobbies or stuff like that that they told her about. She's also sending an email for every first anniversary. Also here, editing, um, adding a photo or stuff like that to make it more personal. And these activities are paying off for her very quickly. Um, as I mentioned before, She's a good photographer, so most of her customers were already happy with her. So 95% of her customers always told her that she, they would refer her. But in the end, back then, only 40% did because they simply forgot about her a few weeks after the wedding. But now with her um, um, relationship building activities, 80% of, um, of her clients are actively referring her to family and friends. So from now on, she's actually not investing into marketing anymore because the, the 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 inbound is so high she's simply can live from from all the all the referred um clients and also um back then as i said um most users uh, most clients were very happy so 60 percent of them booked roxana for a second shoot now it's even 80 percent as you can see her small activities like investing some time and in sending a birthday email in personalize, uh, personalizing the communication is paying off big time. Yeah. And of course, she's using the May Butler context feature. And now we will show you a live demo on how actually to use this context feature and to convert it into your CRM tool for your for your business. And as I mentioned before, depending on your industry and your clients, of course, you need to adjust it to your needs, but it gives you the flexibility to do so. So James will give you a live demo in Apple Mail. Thank you. Hi, James. everyone. Yeah, so as Tobias said, I'm using Apple Mail for this demo today, but the process is the same in Gmail and in Outlook. Um, and yeah, the first thing you'll need to do after you've selected the email with the contact that you want to save is to open up Mail Butler itself, which you do with this button in the top right hand corner in Apple Mail. And from here, the sidebar opens and up here you'll see there are two tabs. There's one for the email and there's one for the contact. So if you click on the contact and then from here you can click create a contact and make a contact manually. Mail Butler then just instantly creates the contact for you and you can then make edits yourself to it. So if you click on this pencil icon, up here, you'll see that there are a couple of fields that are already filled out with Tobias's name and email address. But going back to what Tobias said about building personal relationships and adding in specific information so you can build really, really good relationships with your customers, you can click on add more details. And from here, you can add in some pre-given fields, stuff like company, phone number, position, but you can also add in other. And as you can see, I've used some already myself, but you can add whatever you want here. So you can add name of dog, birthday, um, name of spouse, anything like that. Um, and that means that that information is always saved within Mail Butler. 
And then on top of that, after you've made those fields, you can share either the individual field with all of your Mail Butler collaborators, or you can click this button up here and simply share the whole contact with anyone who is also working with you in Mail Butler. So that's creating a contact manually, but I'm going to delete this now because there's actually an even quicker way now to create a contact in Mail Butler, which is using our new Smart Assistant feature, which is an AI powered email assistant that can do stuff for you in your inbox. So again, in the sidebar, if you click on this button here, then you'll see that these four buttons come up and the one that we're focusing on today is the contact info button. And if you click on this, our smart assistant will scan the email and it mostly gets the information from the email signature. So it works best on emails which have a signature, but it will work on emails which don't. You can select or deselect any of the information that you need. Click Save Info and the contact is saved. And if I go back up to the contact tab, then it's right here again, which is slightly quicker. It fills out some more information rather than you having to enter everything manually. Um, so that's creating a contact. After you've created a contact, there's loads of different things that you can do with it. So you can add notes and tasks to contacts just like you would with emails. So I can add a note and say Tobias doesn't work Tuesdays and then that's sticky to this contact. Anytime I open up this contact, I'll have that information. I can also add a task. So if I click on the task button, which is the blue one, then here I can write something like send to be as the meeting notes and that that task is then automatically saved and just like with mail butler tasks on emails you can set reminders and due dates you can share the task and you can also automate the task um, not everyone maybe knows exactly what task automations are there's not time to talk about them in detail in this webinar but we have a webinar coming up in a few weeks about tasks and also about task automations. And also, um, I'll ask Rogelio to share a video that I made about task automations in the chat for anyone who wants to watch it after this webinar. So those are tasks and notes, but there's still more that you can do. If you scroll down a little bit with the contact, then you can see there's this contact insights section. So it will tell me the best time to reach Tobias, um, when he's most likely to respond on working days and on the weekend, it pulls information for the whole week, but the working days Monday to Friday for Tobias specifically will be more accurate. And it shows you how long it took him to open an email, which is based on Mail Butler's tracking feature and how long it took him to reply. And if you click on this blue button here, then you can see more specific information for each day, which is based on, again, when Tobias opened and replied to emails in his inbox on every day of the week. Um, and using this basically means that you can plan your emails either to spend uh, to send at a specific time. So you're most you're likely more likely to get a response. Or if there's somebody who's never really responding, then you can stop trying to contact them and save your time and send emails to people who are more worth your, your working hours. Um, another thing that was also provided by the Mail Butler Contacts feature is this conversation history section. So this will be all emails sent to Tobias by my whole Mail Butler team. And there's a lot of people on our team. So you can see there, all filtered by month and year, and you can also filter um, emails sent to him by other things like oldest on top, not opened, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and again, this means that say two people in your team are in contact with a client, then one of you can stop being in contact and you can easily see here that the other person's already emailed them, so you don't need to. So that's all of the information on specific contacts, but say you need to find a contact and you've got loads and loads of them. Again, in the sidebar up here, this blue button opens up the dashboard. And from here, you can navigate to this middle tab, which is the contacts tab. And now I've got a list of all of my saved mail about the contacts. From here, you can click on filters and you can filter by either contacts you've made or that have been shared with you by your collaborators and also sort them alphabetically. Um, yeah, and also if you've made 
as you can see here, tasks or notes and stuck them to a contact, then they'll show up here as well. And from here, you can simply click on the contact again and you go back to that same screen. So that's just about everything in the in the sidebar itself. But you might have a load of contacts in a different program which you want to pull over to Mail Butler. And you can do this. So down in the bottom, there's this cog icon. And if you click on that and then go to account and preferences. From here, <clears throat> navigate down to the integrations tab on the left hand side. And you can see here importing and exporting of contacts. Um, I can import from Apple Mail or I can import and also export a CF CSV file of my contacts. And in Gmail and in Outlook, you can do the same with uh, Google contacts and with um, Outlook Microsoft contacts. So that's syncing. And then the very last thing to mention would be again in this cog icon, say you need a refresher on the contacts feature and it's um, kind of ma the main way to use it. There's um, this button down here, which is quick start guide. And if you click on that, it'll open up this pop up and it gives you a, a quick overview of our features, um, how to add a contact, easy accessing of contacts and seeing um, an overview of email history. <clears throat> it only gives a couple of different ways to use it and there's loads of different ways to use the contacts feature. So for more information, you can obviously head to our support center, but this gets you just started using the feature. And yeah, I'll pass back over to Tobias to share his slide just for the final section of the demo, which is the next slide. You can also use the contacts feature on mobile. Um, so you can see you can also add and edit contacts on mobile. Um, and as you can see, it's also in the language of your mobile device. So Tobias has his in German, so it's in German. And yeah, you can um, add uh, notes and tasks on your phone and as I said also add and edit contact details and that's everything. Thanks a lot James. So Rogelio? Yes yeah, so now uh, just uh, some additional information we are very excited and we are very happy that we have announced him through our social media channels and everything a little bit a little bit more about a new feature that we're having which is tax. Now you would be able to have different tags in, uh, in, within your inbox that you can label them and you can have like contact tags, you can have task tags and also notes, note tags. So you can keep your inbox a little bit more organized and always easier to find the things that you need right away. So feel free to check that out. It will be coming very soon and stay tuned to our uh, social media channels and our homepage in order to see all the new tags feature. Then, uh, as just like a, a little bit of as a wrap up, just uh, remember that retention versus acquisition is that business are striving for growth. But it's very essential to remember that retaining the loyal customers, it's the key to cost effective and sustainable success. So it's always important to listen to your to your customers, stay loyal to them as they are staying loyal to you. We have some some people in the chat that were saying that we're we're with us since 2017. So that talks about that we really care about listening to your inquiries, listening to your feedbacks, because because of you, we keep impro improving our, our product and make it better for, for everyone, pretty much. And then, of course, it's very important that in order to stay uh, updated with the latest, with the latest um, news about Mail Butler and also with some of the, you, you've heard probably a lot about AI these days and everyone's trying to reach the latest things, the latest trends and everything. Well, we noticed and something that we actually saw from our webinars, interviews, surveys, etc., is that a lot of people were trying to really get uh, ahead into all the terminology and everything, but we're trying to take a little bit of a step back and just kind of debrief all the information regarding the AI Musk most uh, used terms and everything. And we're doing this social media AI one on one series so we can debrief all that information for you and you can always be an AI expert and also a privacy expert regarding AI. So feel free to check all of our social media channels. I will be pasting all the links there so you can go and follow us. And we're also doing some um, some giveaways from time to time. We had uh, some people that 
have won like a lifetime membership of Mel Butler. So make sure to stay tuned and follow us on social media. Thanks a lot, Rogelio. So as we mentioned in the beginning, we have a QA session now. So now it's time to ask questions if you haven't done so. Just give me a second to open the document. And Tiffany was so nice to already collect some of the questions while I'm answering or trying to answer all of them. I didn't read them yet. Um, feel free to use the chat to ask more questions. So since person contact info is already in my Apple contact, is there some way to just import the contact without having to manual or AI it, it in? Um, yes. Um, in the preferences, James showed it at the end of the demo. I think you asked the question already before. He showed it. Um, we have this import and export feature, which allows you to easily do that. Yeah. Some questions for task. Is there any way to connect tasks in Maybot that was my existing task manager? Yes, we uh, have integrations with a few um, external task management tools like Adana, Todoist, Meister Task and some more just check out if yours is listed there as well if not again tell us um, we, are, we are listening um, and we will do our best to to build an integration for that service as well um, i have an exit spread with the contact name and phone numbers is there an easy way to load all these into my butler yes i'm saying here um, there's an import feature for csv um, of course, there could be sometimes some problems with these fields. If there are anything not working for you, just get in touch with us. Yeah, and we are here to help to import everything. The signature webinar. Yeah, um, you can always rewatch all kind of webinars on our our website. Simply go to maybutlerio slash webinars. I can quickly show you. Um, resources, webinars. We also have run really nice tutorial videos, by the way. And when you scroll down to the bottom, um, you can see um, the past webinars and rewatch them uh, and watch the recording actually. And of course, while watching it and you have a question, just just send us a message to support it. Maybe I uh, like the service seems great, but I really would like to know more about data security. Thanks for elaborating on that. Of course, everything is encrypted um, and GDPR conform. Um, we have our server actually here in Germany. Um, of course, if it's like super, super, super sensitive information, you shouldn't use it, but that's not May Butler related. It's for every tool. Um, you shouldn't, um, you should be careful with the data in general, but I can only tell you that you have still full control of the, about the data. And of course, we're not selling data or anything like that. We're earning our money with our, our paid plans. You can find the pricing on our pricing page um, and we're not interested in your data. Um, yeah, that's all I can tell you that it's super safe to use. Um, Sonoma update release date. Yeah, um, Sonoma, maybe for the ones not using Apple Mail, there will be a new um, Mac OS system called Sonoma release on the 26th of September. Um, as Sonoma comes with big changes for us um, because it's not um, supporting mail plugins anymore, but our development is, team is already working since months on making Mail Butler compatible and we are in the final process of finalizing everything and we will um, be ready very soon. There's no fixed release date yet because it's software development. We um, can only tell you the release date when we are in the final process of final testing everything. We're not there yet, but I can tell you it will not take that long anymore and we do our best to to release it as soon as possible. Um, make sure to follow us on social media and also make sure to subscribe to our email list. If you haven't unsubscribed from our email list, you of course will get an email with all the info yeah, about it. But again, this is only for um, Apple Mail users. For Gmail and Outlook users, everything stays the same. Yeah. Uh, when using AI Smart Assistant for anything in Maybutler, how much information goes out from your servers? Um, have you installed a local version of JGPT or does it go through OpenAI servers? It goes through OpenAI servers. But 
we have some anonymization in place. So we try to anonymize, anonymize as much information as possible before it goes to OpenAI. It would take me too long to explain everything. Um, Tiffin or James just posted a blog post where we um, discussed that topic actually. Um, but I can tell you that, um, Rochelle, you mentioned before, we talk a lot about, about AI on social media. And our big topic for, for us as May Butler is AI and privacy. Because we see many businesses throwing AI on everything, but not considering um, data privacy there. And we have actually internally a big project about this data anonymization and spending a lot of resources and money on that topic to make it more secure for you. Because providing AI features is kind of easy uh, when you're not considering data privacy. Yeah. Um, 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 um. Sorry, I missed this, but I may but like context sync with Apple contacts. You can only import export. We are on purpose not syncing everything because the fields are different. Um, and that's why we decided to not have like a a uh, live sync between um, Apple context or May Butler context. So in the end, you would need to decide which you're using. Um, and I can, of course, only can recommend May Butler because we are really considering also these um, CRM related features for it. It says there's no context in, to import. I can. Uh, Irena has shared a support center article related to this question okay. that yeah but i would yeah, just say yeah. if your problem isn't sorted by the support center article then send an email to our support team yeah so we have support team members um taking care of it and then getting back to you and trying to solve it for you and the and um, the email is also the support email is also on the chat so you can also look there So um, does a separate standalone CRM provide a lot more tools such as email group campaigns, et cetera? Are you proposing May Butler as a standalone CRM? Would it gen integrate with existing CRM software? Um, yes, there are CRM tools which are great um, if you need these features. Um, they are, of course, always in a separate tool. Um, you need to switch all your communication behavior. You would if you're using an external CRM software outside of your inbox, I can only tell you that you would need to stop using your email client because otherwise you don't have all the communication in one place. That's the biggest benefit of May Butler. On purpose, we're not doing mass email campaigns. So if you're trying to find a solution to cover like your 100,000 clients, I can tell you that May Butler is not the go-to tool for you. If you have a, a smaller business serving a, a couple of hundreds to a couple of thousand clients um, and high high value clients, then May Butler is the right tool for you. It always depends on the use case um, and what you're trying to achieve. Yeah. Good. Are there more questions? I will stay a little bit longer here in this call. So when you have questions, feel free to to type now because I will see when you type. Otherwise, for the rest, thanks you, thank you for joining. We will send you a recording very soon, probably tomorrow already, and then you can rewatch everything, of course. And um, always, when there are questions, reach out to us. We try to listen to our customers, as we mentioned here in the presentation, and taking care of everything you're asking for. Yeah. Thanks for the nice feedback, Richard and Raphael. And big thank you to you, James and Rogelio. Great demo and great intro, Rogelio.